Hello and welcome to the sixth in the series of Three Principles Practitioners Around the World. And today I'm in conversation with Helen Boyle Dawson. Now Helen's a 3P practitioner who trained with Ian Watson, who some of you will know very well. Um, he's from Insight Space. And also Helen's done the One Thought Institute training. And just to give you a bit of background on, on Helen, um, Helen works with leaders and what she does is helps them find their true voice so they can go forth powerfully into the world, create their dreams and also live with more fun, sense of enjoyment and fulfillment. Now I call this conversations with three principles practitioners around the world and although Helen's living in London she is originally from New Zealand so I think we call today the New Zealand Day, if that's okay with you, Helen. Um, sure. <laughs> and Helen, Helen has a background in natural medicine and also project work here in, in London. Um, she's also run the half marathon during the period when um, her son was having heart surgery, so she ran for the British Heart Foundation, uh, despite actually being a non-runner. And she's also currently writing a book called Waking Up to the Joy of Living, a professional woman's guide to better living. Um, she's also powerfully advocated extensively for her son and achieved the what was not possible. And she's an experienced traveller and her favourite trip was to the Middle East. Now her clients are entrepreneurs, community leaders, coaches, project leaders and senior management. And Helen enjoys watching others begin to see and experience the full creative potential that they themselves have. So she plays a supportive role during the creative process whilst a new dawn for living is experienced. So Helen, that sounds like a fabulous place to take your clients and guide them through. So welcome first of all. Hello Helen. Thank you and thank you for inviting me. This is lovely. Oh, it's lovely to have you Helen. Um, and, and I'd love, as we normally do with these conversations, just to invite you to share with our listeners and our viewers, what got you into three principles? How did you find this understanding in the first place? If, if you'd like to talk us through that, that'd be fantastic. Sure, sure. Okay. So um, I guess I'd always been interested in uh, self-development, um, different understandings that are out there. Um, and we'd been through a pretty uh, challenging period um, within, within our family life. I was back doing some homeopathy and one of my friends and dear mentors, um, Ian Watson, he, he put out a course, uh, he, he sent an email and to be honest I didn't even really know what the email said, I just knew that I had to do it and it was his first course, it was called the Truth of the Moment Training um, and yeah I had known Ian from some different courses I'd done in terms of sort of professional development and when you know somebody who can take in understanding and really sort of embody it and share it in a beautiful way, you're willing to trust them. And so without actually reading it properly, <laughs> I just knew there was something in what was being shared that regardless of my current circumstances, you know, where there was a child who was constantly ill and, and you know, many, many challenges. Um, and, you know, I'd, we'd reached sort of an okayness. I heard something within that that pointed to a depth or a richness of life that perhaps I wasn't aware of. Um, and so I joined his course and um, it was most definitely, you know, an awakening to the creative potential and the richness that really is all of us and and is life and you know when you are touched so deeply by that you can't help yourself but share that with others and so I, it's a real privilege to work with the people I do and um, it's a yeah it's a it's a it's a beautiful journey for people both to experience a, a good life in so much as their experience of day-to-day -day living as well as what they then share with the rest of humanity really so that's um, and yeah then I, I didn't do the full um, one thought course but I did a an adaptation of it again just fitting in with what was possible within my within my life and it's just so great to get an experience from so many 
different practitioners and to and to then also you know do that you, you know your, your your own way to then sort of let go of all of that as well and to really listen into what's true for us and to take it sort of your own way um, yeah I was reflecting this morning thinking oh Jillian's going to ask me that is there a <laughs> was there was there something that really helped me um, in 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 terms of of an insight in terms of um, going beyond the beyond the overwhelm or anxiety um, that's a really powerful way to live and um, I had sort of an, an interesting story I guess uh, or a interesting moment where I had you know what we in the field may may term an, an insight which is just simply a, a realization of something that makes sense to us really um, that helps us in, in our living or in what we want to do um, so my beautiful little boy was about to have open heart surgery and um, this they look after you so beautifully you know given the circumstances there the staff at the hospital are so so caring and you know within the realms of the experience they really attempt to, to help you through that and what they do as part of that the night before they give you a room at the hospital if they can they get they give you a room um, it's not far from us so it's a for us it was a there was a small room for two adults with really heightened <laughs> heightened emotions <laughs> with a child who was about to go undergo extensive surgery uh, he was nearly three and this we had been told it was going to happen again and again and again so we'd gotten ready it didn't happen and so my goodness and so um, and that that night it just occurred to me my husband was um, was really challenged and I was really challenged and it just occurred to me that instead of staying in the room together I might just cycle home <laughs> and stay at home <laughs> without my son <laughs> who um, would then you know the next day be having this extensive surgery and it was a kind of a bit of a shock to to listen into that it was like oh like a you know you can go into sort of overwhelm and anxiety about what other people would think or anything like that but at the simplicity at the sort of the, the powerful simplicity of what I was really hearing and what I was listening into is that in some way that maybe I didn't know yet it would just be incredibly helpful to do this so when the words came out of my mouth it was a surprise to me and it was a surprise to my husband and I remember cycling away going really like really and I remember listening into some recordings and um, I don't even know if I slept I think that was the idea would any of us get some rest you know what's the way that we can kind of take care of us and um, so it's simple form that's what I had to do so I listened in and I and I did that and I was quite anxious okay some would say well of course you were but you know uh, I think now I know that in, in any situation we can be calm or or not but the next day I woke up with this extraordinary calmness and it was just it was such a beautiful rich experience um, both for us and it was so helpful I could literally be there so um, and yeah I had been in more thinking the night before and maybe my husband was then and there's not like a so there's, there's like no judgment in either of that it's just that that's how it sort of was and by listening into what was helpful for me to do I did and it just made the next 24 48 hours really incredible I was very 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 present in a way that I would never have believed somebody could be beside the bedside of a child you know in HDU, ICU, the high dependency units, that you know, where you literally don't know if they're going to make it and have this incredible stillness and a, and a really powerful sense of peace, regardless of all the beeping of machines. You know, like they just go beep, 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 
you know, and at some point there's the ventilators going like, you know, like, is that going to stop? And sort of before all of that, that there's, and, you know, anybody who has an experience like that knows beyond a doubt that there's something beyond us that's really helpful in life that can make life pretty simple if, if only we let it. And I guess in, in an essence that's really what I do. I sit with my clients and we, we come home to that stillness together. And they find that powerful simplicity to how they want to live, to what they want to do, how they want to be or to who they truly are. And that's incredibly helpful to people. What I hear behind what you were saying, Helen, that was beautiful. It was very touching and very powerful. It was a deep knowing as a mother what was right for you in that moment and, and what was right for your son and husband and what you talk about that deep stillness that came across so powerfully in what you were saying and we're going to talk more about finding the next step for people and just going beyond the overwhelm that you know, you alluded to there with all the, the beeping machines and, and, and the ventilator and watching that little thing going bip, 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 and just hoping it's going to keep going bip, bip, and not do that. And to go beyond that overwhelm and get to the powerful simplicity to know. I think you've already illustrated where that place is and it's not a how to we can't tell people how to can we but no. we can just talk more deeply about that stillness that deep connection that actually everything's handled there's nothing we need to do if we when we get into connection, that's when the, the deep, deep knowing comes. And it's almost like, oh, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And, and just as you just did, oh, what a relief, you know, like a relief. Yeah, like a, a massive relief and that certainly what most people find if they're really, really busy in, in a lot of, I realize I'm doing my hands outside of the camera. <laughs> uh, if they're really, really busy in, in, in a lot of overwhelm quite often um, or anxiety, you know, which is just some thinking about the future, that's all. Can feel really compelling and very concerning, but um, even the worst case of anxiety is just a, a lot of thinking about something outside of the moment and yeah when people become a little bit aware of that I think they begin often to experience that sort of level of stillness between themselves and the anxiety if you like and I love what you said about connectedness because you know qu quite often people misunderstand that they are not connected in those moments in terms of finding out what to do they think oh I, you know I, and there's searching or scrambling or um, and so again that's just a for all of us isn't it it's when we sort of re remember that 
we're we're all connected anyway. Not in like a woo woo, but like there's just this intelligence to life. There's a really true intelligence to life beyond any overwhelm or anxiety that we could ever experience. There's a, there's a deeper truth. And I guess that's the place of stillness and that's the that's where we find without looking, if you like, it finds us, reveals itself to us. Um, and a beautiful thing about this is that it sort of frees us up to live. And it frees us up to live and to sort of go out and do or, or, or be, not that we need to, but because we can. You know, if we think of great leaders in the world, that's what we see there, you know, pretty clear headed. And there's a deep knowing to whatever they do, even if it doesn't make sense on the outside to other people. There's a knowing within them. And so the, yeah, the simplicity of it is just kind of within ourselves that we have that. And to, I guess in some way, when we acknowledge it more, there's a, does, does, is that helpful? Does that, does that make sense? Yes, and I love what you said about you know, great leaders come from that place because if you've got a leader that's really, really up in their head and you know, has got big decisions to make, decisions made from a very busy mind that's so caught up in the what's going on out there and what do I do about it. You know, you can intellectually make a lot of sensible decisions. Yeah, 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 let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. That's why I pull the pros and the cons and you know, QED, that seems to be the most sensible thing. And that, that's fine, but to really, really hear what would be a great thing to do, that's got to come from... Well, we, again, we come back to the same words, don't we? That stillness, that quietening down, that gives the access to the little still voice within. Yeah, yeah. That just speaks. That speaks out of nowhere, and you know, and, and this random idea can pop in. But that's probably the one to have a look at and just go, mm, yeah. That's the one that lands. And it, again, it's that elusiveness, isn't it? It's that you can't manufacture that. You know, it's, it's like, oh, I don't know, when you're cycling along, just enjoying the countryside, something might occur to you that, you think, oh, gosh, I was really worrying about that yesterday. That seems like a really great thing to do about that. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, your mind is not, it's like a, a, mix, a ball of wool, isn't it, that's all got itself tangled up if you've got a problem that you're really, really working at to yeah. solve, you know, and you're trying to get the bit of, and you just get a little bit of string of the wool that's kind of unraveled, and then there's this great mass of rubbish still all tied up, you know, and you're, and you're trying to tease everything out and make it all nice and smooth, and and sometimes putting it in the corner almost and, and just giving it a little shake and it will suddenly go, ah, all by itself. There's the, exactly. there's the, there's the little bit of the, you know, that I needed to just tease out. That's beautiful. <laughs> I love, and I love, the, I love the hand movements. And just as you said that, that ah. Oh. So there's often a really big relief for people when they realize that it's that simple, that if they just listen in, that we you know, that not only, you know, that we all have this intelligence. And it's quite funny because people who are often, you know, really can go into, like we all can, each and every one of us could go into overwhelm or, or, or anxiety. Um, you know, it's one of the human experiences, right? It's not really, a, 
it's not just you. That's what people say, oh, I thought it was me. But it's not, you know, it's one of the experiences, you know, people people can have. But quite often when they, when they will say, yeah, for, for example, you know, somebody came to me and they said, I feel like I've got more to share with the world. But I just don't know what I don't know what to do. But I know that there's something, and you know there was like there were there was overwhelm that they must find it, or there was you know like anxiety about if they didn't do it now or um, and you know when people just quiet and down as with this person, often there's like a surprise to what comes forth, and maybe it's something that's come before that's been ignored, <laughs> and that's okay. You know, like there's sort of there's a timeliness to to action or to life. You know that that again that we don't need to concern ourselves with, and yet also to be willing and to be open to what we hear. And again, I guess in terms of leaders, that's what I see: like the willingness and the openness to take action from that really clear place, beyond that anxiety and the overwhelm even if that's part of the experience in different moments, they know the, the sort of the stillness in different moments. There's a, there's a clarity to sort of to what comes that there's a, there's a natural momentum, if you like, to, to take action from. So the, the person I was mentioning then has sort of, you know, come up with something to do in terms of some a lot of really great stuff in the community that's really, really clear to her and I, and I know that she's going to do and I don't know, it's just, it, it's quite sort of funny that quite often people will go, you know, that sort of that, that true voice, that, that really clear true voice sometimes, you know, there's a bit of insecurity about stepping forward or, or, or doing it. And when people just get very clear and very quiet, because people can think when we start having this conversation, oh, just go and sit under a tree or get quiet. But it's like there's a, there's a richness that's available in the quiet that quite often means we stop floundering or taking unnecessary actions and we take the ones with maybe clarity, a better feeling, um, and that's really powerful to live from, 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 from that place. So as people get more familiar with where they can live from within themselves or, or where they are, not can but necessarily where they are and where they may want to take action from, maybe from within that anxiety, probably won't have yeah, <laughs> much of a great... Um, outcome maybe um, and yet when they are reminded of that intelligence within themselves that they could then find for themselves and of themselves there's just a powerful way not a powerful way but as in it can be really gentle and yet massively effective in terms of how people show up for themselves and outwardly in life. And this kind of sounds like, oh, do this to go and do something, and that's not really what it is. It's just more of a an invitation that sometimes helps people to know that there's a there's a vastness and a and a rich stillness that we really can both depend on and is life. Um, that it's you know that it's sort of all of us that if we become more aware of that, then we just naturally gravitate to and navigate from more freely. Mm, I was writing a couple of words down as you were speaking, Helen, that okay. just popped into my head. Um, and one of them was effectiveness. Because what I heard from what you were saying was that when, when somebody's in that space, they're going to be far more effective at taking the path that's true for them and takes them to their goal, for want of a better word, um, without going all around the houses. 
Absolutely. And and also often I think when people just get a little bit more more still, still er, <laughs> um, what they want to do or what they do do can surprise them. So often those goals will fall by the wayside. You know, the what they want to do was more of a a should or a have have to or a um, so often when people quieten down their yeah what they want to do and what they do do um, I want to say becomes greater but this isn't about going and doing great things it's just about knowing that acting from a place of great clarity produces yeah you're right much more effective results mm -hmm. and that's like no matter who we are or what we're doing whether you're a mum in the home or a, you know you know a parent a teacher in the classroom a leader within the community or somebody you know recovering from alcoholism it doesn't really matter it's the same for all of us if we if we can become aware that the operating system which we all have means that we, we have the ability to clear up <laughs> if you like and take action from that place. Mm. And of course, you know, the insecurity is when people understand where the insecurity comes from, it's not such a barrier, is it, to, That's to it. moving forward? So are we in that peace of mind or are we in insecurity? And just knowing that is helpful again. So do we want to be taking action from the insecurity or do we? And that's not to say we have to wait either. We can still do things, right? And I love that too. So we can still be doing things and living. But just the awareness that, you know, say somebody having a lot of anxiety would be having a very physical experience of that. Mm. And touching on that, you know, that feeling. Yeah. That feeling of, Ooh. yeah, is is a really good indication of kind of what's going on thought wise, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. So you know, if we have this vast pond and this intelligence of life that we can sort of draw from that you know that will bring us these new thoughts and that you know we're just going to have this different level of, of awareness in, in different moments and that we all are the same like that then yeah either um, sorry I think you said what, what was it uh, about the that's right the, the insecurity so that sort of you know just being aware that we can be insecure we can have insecure thinking but we within ourselves at our trueness are not insecure. We're just having an insecure experience. And that can free people up for better living, you know, for a better experience. Um, but it's not something that needs to be sought after. That if we just sort of leave things alone, the system will take care of that for us. So somebody who's in overwhelm or anxiety may often get anxious about that. And that's just kind of adding layers on, adding layers on to that away from the simplicity or that, that's, that, that sort of peace, this sort of you know, vast pond that they could be could be sort of operating from and I think if people know that then that helps them to know okay I don't need to do anything to try and get away from it it will change because that's how the system works like the system will take care of this for me I can carry on living and then <laughs> there will be there will be a shift and as I shift if I just listen in more I'll hear something and f know what to do next and it's okay not to know yet, because that's momentary, isn't it? Can be momentary, or um, and maybe just being aware. You know, for a lot of people, it's uh, sorry. I laugh because it's quite funny when 
people go, oh, but I had this thing to do, but I don't really want to do it because that's not what I had the idea about myself to do. Quite often people have some really clear ideas about what to go and do and maybe share with the world and maybe get in and into that insecurity and and the over like so it seems like it's overwhelming to do. Um, I remember hearing somebody so beautifully say more recently that when you step out the world meets you and kind of just being aware of that again there's yeah we just yeah we just don't need to be so so overwhelmed because you know the magic of life is that um, a people are great and they really do want to help one another <laughs> and if that's not your experience it's just not your experience yet and um, when we're acting from that sort of clearer place then um, from that sort of stillness within us the the overwhelm just often doesn't make sense anymore much like the anxiety it just doesn't make sense and maybe people can have periods of it again as they go into new things or um, and again it's just not to mistake that that meaning anything about themselves or about what they want to do it's just they're just having lots of thinking <laughs> Um, I was describing to somebody, um, you know, when you ha have an anxiety attack about seeming like you're going to die and it really feels like you're going to die <laughs> or not be able to breathe and it's a real sensory experience because you're really going into it. And um, so to know that you're taken care of even in that moment much like with the ventilator or the machines sort of without the machines I guess the machine being life that even if we have moments or periods of anxiety or, or, or overwhelm we too can fall back into a, a place of stillness where we can find our next step I'm reminded when you were talking there of somebody that we we both were at the um, Innate Health Conference and one of the speakers was talking about the ill health she was experience, experiencing at the moment mm -hmm. and her description of still knowing she was okay mm -hmm. even though all this frightening stuff was going on um, was just such a, a powerful thing to share really because you know what you were saying about um, the ventilator and it's almost like you know when if we're on a ventilator and that ventilator stops that's actually still okay mm -hmm. and to get to a place like that comes back almost to that you know that I'm not in control and the trust that you were talking about you know right going back to the conversation at the beginning that we started with when when you heard something that Ian said and you know, and, and you just trusted your feeling to I want to know more about that you know it's like <laughs> you almost didn't have a choice really it was just like oh yeah I'm there yeah and and it's that that same kind of trust that yeah and it's yeah. often in a way it's quite sort of hidden people you know when people take action from that place it's they don't go oh I had to trust because it's it's sort of inherent to this to the to the state to the feeling it's like oh yeah it's almost like doesn't need to be argued with or doesn't you know doesn't there's no um, and really, I mean, I guess that's the same sort of for all of life, isn't it? As you so beautifully just described then. And, you know, that can be a little bit frightening for some people. What do you mean that's okay? And so anything we're sort of saying here isn't to say 
believe this or think this because that's you know we're just having a conversation if that's not you know your experience that's okay mm -hmm. and yet when you've had a very powerful experience as I know you know you have um, and I have too. say you know say yeah like with my dad when you yeah when you don't argue with life so you know we, we were living in London and we came back here and now you know, my son has additional needs. When you don't argue with that, you enjoy you enjoy it. And yeah, just in terms of people finding it's almost like you don't need to find anything, it finds you. <laughs> and that sounds a bit zen, just kinda of hang out in the hammock or something, but it it's not. It's kind of like if you're yeah, I guess if you're sort of willing, I keep coming back to sort of being willing. If you're sort of willing just to, just, just to sort of listen and to be okay that maybe that there's a bit of a storm at different times, you know, that it's okay for there to be a storm. And and once the storm's over and the thunderclouds clear up and the lightning strikes go away, <laughs> um, there you are, you know, there you are again. And, you know, and you and you can listen in and you can find what it is that you want to do. If there's something that you want to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Life is a contact sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, I love what you said about about that about it being okay because we were talking just for a few minutes just before we came on, and yeah, we were just sort of saying how you know all of life experiences are just rich, even if it doesn't feel like it at the time. You know, certainly, <laughs> sorry, I laugh. Certainly, it wouldn't have looked like it during, you know, different periods, say, of lots of ill health or hospitalizations. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have looked like that. And I certainly wouldn't have said it in the moment. Oh, it's all great. But, you know, I, <laughs> and it's kind of like it's okay that, that that's not the experience when it is. And yet, the underneath all of that, there is a richness to all experiences. And that's not to say that certain things are okay to put up with because I have people say that well that should mean that this is you know people can't harm that's not what we're saying we're just not really arguing with life so I guess in, in simplicity it's just bringing it back to how where we ourselves are living from are we living from an insecurity which yeah we might get overwhelmed or we might get anxious or are we filled with the richness and the vastness with who we truly are and when we are we, we find we find that next step in whatever form it takes I think that's a beautiful point to to pause I think Helen it that's a lovely illustration of of what you're pointing to and have been pointing to throughout this conversation. Um, now, I'd love for you to tell people where they can find you, how they can get a hold of you, and, and maybe a few words about how you work with people. Sure, sure, okay. Thank you. Yeah, so I have a website, just my name, without the hyphen, <laughs> HelenBoyleDawson.com. And there's some audios, there's some blogs, there's a bit of information. And you know, that's changing all the time. So you can sign up to my newsletter, there's a recording, there's different things that I share with people within the community um, that do that. And a lot of my work is uh, is one is one to one. It's um, and we have really I love this because the words become meaningless. It's like powerful conversations and I don't mean that in a way of go do. It's, you know, we literally just be reminded of our, of our true essence. And it just really helps people. So I often work with period over people over a period of time. And if anybody wants to contact me about that, they just drop me an email at Helen Boyle, Helen at Helen Boyle Dawson. Dot com, 
and you know she'll you know we, we, we can arrange that and just as well actually if anybody has any queries or anything they would like to share um, having watched this you know they're more than welcome to contact me I'd, I'd, lo I'd love to hear it's always um, it's quite extraordinary often what insights because I think we've been pointing to people have their own wisdom within and when we just listen into that there's a richness to how we go about life and so if anybody has something about that that they want to share feel free to get in touch that's be great lovely thank you Helen thank you thank it's you been very a much delight today. talking to you and I hope everybody has enjoyed it I'm sure I'm sure everybody has and um, once again thank you very much Helen okay thank you enjoy the rest of your day thank you bye bye everybody